Hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial. In our tutorial today, I will provide a brief overview on Amazon Bedrock. I would recommend that you view this tutorial on Amazon Bedrock terminology before continuing further ahead. The URL to the tutorial is mentioned right here at the bottom. Now, why am I recommending you to view this tutorial? Um, there's a whole bunch of Amazon it's on bedrock terminology that you need to know and understand really very well before you continue further ahead. Otherwise, this overview will not make a lot of sense. If you understand what is a base model, what is a foundation model, what is a uh, prompt, what is it, what is a model inference, what is provision throughput, what are embeddings, yeah, most welcome. You can continue further ahead. But if you do not understand these terms, if you do not know what RAG is all about, then I certainly would recommend that you view this tutorial and then come back to this one. Okay, because otherwise uh, it will be difficult for you to understand. And since I've created a dedicated video for all of these terms, I will not be discussing those these terms in this particular video. These are some reference URLs that I've mentioned over here. Whenever you have time, I would recommend you can visit these URLs as they have additional information on this particular topic. I have created a playlist for Amazon Bedrock on my channel. This is a URL for that. So any video that I create on Amazon Bedrock will be added to this playlist. So if you like, you can bookmark this particular playlist so that you can go to Bedrock videos directly. These reference URLs and the playlist URL will be mentioned in the description of this video for your reference. So what is Amazon Bedrock? Amazon Bedrock is a fully managed serverless service that enables you to build and scale Gen AI applications using foundation models. So this is the simplest definition of Amazon Bedrock that you can give to anyone. But let me draw your attention to a couple of key or important words in this definition. The first two are fully managed. So it's a fully managed service. That essentially means that AWS is doing the heavy lifting behind the scenes. Okay, you don't have to do much. You pretty much have to just configure the service and consume or work with this particular service. All the complexity has been taken care of for you. The next word that you need to pay attention to is serverless. Serverless, essentially no servers. Again, no infrastructure man management for you. So that makes it even more easier. So like it's probably a dream for developers because it's fully managed and it's serverless. So you don't have to really do anything other than configure the service and use the service. It's probably one of the easiest services to work um, in the AWS stack. Other thing is generating AI application so gen AI applications, okay, uh, not generating, sorry, generative AI applications, my bad, apologies, uh, using foundation models. So you have access to several foundation models to create your gen AI apps. Uh, these are uh, third-party foundation models. You can also bring your own foundation model if you like, and you can use it with this particular service. So in simple words, it's a fully managed serverless service that enables you to build Gen AI applications using foundation models. Now, applications that are built using Amazon Bedrock follow Amazon's responsible AI policy. So Amazon has ensured that Amazon Bedrock itself and the applications that are developed using this service will follow their responsible AI policy. Now, whenever you work with AI or you create a Gen AI application, you will most certainly get this question, you know, uh, is this ethical AI? What is your responsible AI policy? So Amazon has taken care of this for you. But what you need to do whenever you're working with uh, Amazon Bedrock Gen AI in general is that you need to ensure that this application that you're developing is in line with your organization's responsible AI policy. That is your responsibility. So Amazon has done their piece of work. 
but to ensure that it is in line with your organization's responsible AI policy or ethical AI policy, that is something that you will need to take care of. Now, Bedrock offers a variety of foundation models or FMs from leading AI companies. You can see all the companies mentioned over here. Uh, you can see Anthropic, you can see Meta, you can see Amazon, you have Amazon Titan models. So the whole bunch of them. And these models are available to you for evaluation and customization. And you can evaluate and customize these models using your own data and using techniques like fine tuning and rank. You can also build agents that execute certain tasks using your enterprise systems and data sources. So all of this is possible when you are working with Amazon Bedrock. Now, when you are working with Bedrock, of course, you will, need, you will work with a foundation model. And in order to work with a foundation model, you need to request access to that particular foundation model. So ensure that you get the required access. So in simple words, while we are working with AI models and developing applications with uh, Amazon Bedrock, we can submit a prompt as an input to the model or create prompt flows or flows. When it was in preview, it was called as prompt flows. Now, when it's released, I believe it's called as flows. You can add guardrails to ensure that no harmful content is shared uh, by this particular model, okay, or it is stopped um, before it is shared with the end user. You can automate certain tasks using bedrock agents, and you can also create a knowledge base for the model to review content and retrieve a response. So all of this is certainly possible. Now, let us look at a list of supported foundational models. This is the URL to that particular list. Again, I will have this posted in the description of this video. Now, let's go there. It's a URL right here. And if you come and you see over here, there is a table of different AI models that are supported by Amazon Bedrock. So when you come to this particular page, what you need to pay attention to is the provider. Who is the provider? So let's take one example. So here you have Amazon. Amazon is a provider. You need to look at the model name. So it is Titan Embeddings right here. You, have, you have also have Titan Image Generator, uh, G1 version 2, a whole bunch of them, right? Then what you need to pay attention to is the model ID. Because when you will work with the uh, with this particular model programmatically, you will need the model ID. So you need to pay attention to the model ID. Also, you need to ensure that this model is available and is supported in your uh, region. So whatever region that you're working out of, that model should be available and should be supported in that particular region. You will see that US East 1 and US West 2 has most of the models. Okay, this is just an observation. As time goes further ahead, I mean, of course, other regions will also have most of these models uh, available and supported. Finally, what you need to look at is the input modalities and the output modalities of a specific model. The input modality will tell you how you are going to communicate with this model? How, how are you going to send the prompt to this model, right? So input modality, in this case, it is text. So your prompt will go as a text, and that's how you are going to, you know, provide your input to your model. Now, how is the output, uh, uh, how is the output going to be generated? How is the response going to be generated by that particular model? So that could be in form of text, that could be in form of chat, it could be in form of image, or if it's an embeddings model, then it will be in form of embeddings. So you need to pay attention to your input modalities and your output modalities to ensure you understand clearly how are you going to send your prompt, how are you going to send your input to, the to your AI model, and how is a model going to send its output back to you? How is the response going to come back to you? Now, most of the models that you will see have a single modality like text, but some of them are multi-modal, okay? So you see that you, there's text and image over here. So you could have a single modality 
for both input and output, or you could have a multi modality or a multi model both for input and output. For example, in this case, if you see this one, the one I'm highlighting right now, Titan Image Generator, its input modality is both text and image. So it's a, it's a, it has multi-modality or it is multi-model when it comes to taking its input or, or taking its prompt. But its output is a single modality or is just an image. So each one of these uh, AI models will have uh, different input and output modalities. Also, if you scroll down, you will see that there is a list of models that they have mentioned over here with their target date for deprecation. Okay, so there will be some kind of a target date uh, mentioned over here. Okay, maybe you have to click on a link to, uh, to go and look at, uh, you know, what is the target date for deprecation. The reason why they share all this information is that once a you know an, an AI model has been created, eventually after some time it will be deprecated when the new version comes out. So when you are creating your application, I would definitely encourage you to see when this you know model was created. Is it active? Is it going to be inactive? When is when is it going to be deprecated? So that you know. Uh, when to come back and change your model. Because if the new version is going to be available, then you have to use that. If a new version is not going to be available, then you have to go and change your AI model. So do come and, you know, uh, look at this particular uh, link. Again, I'll have it mentioned in the description of this video because this link is really very handy and very helpful for you to uh, know what all models are available for you to use in your specific region. So let me go back. Let us continue further ahead. So what are the different use cases that are supported by Bedrock? These are some of the use cases, right? So for example, you can use it to generate images for fashion industry presentation, marketing ads, you know, anything that you, know, you want to generate an image for. You can certainly use uh, the service and the models, the FM models available for text summarization. So you can summarize documents, reports, articles, books, technical documentation, you know, whatever you like. You can also build assistants that understand user requests, that break down tasks, engage with the user to collect information, and then take actions to fulfill that particular request. So that is also possible. And most importantly, you can develop agents that can execute certain orchestrated tasks. So finally, let's go and look at subscription and pricing. And this is the URL for that. So let me go to that URL. So this is a URL right here, pricing. So Amazon Bedrock gives you a choice of two pricing plans for the model inference. Okay, you can, so you can see here. One is on-demand and batch. And the second one is provision throughput or purchase throughput. So depending upon how you want to go, if you want to go pay as you go basis, you can use on-demand and batch. If you have, you know, it, a, an application you have finalized on your model and you feel that, you know, that uh, the model's capacity is not enough, you need additional capacity to be provisioned to ensure that your application performance requirements are met, then you can certainly go for provision throughput. Now, again, pricing models are different on-demand batch, as you can see here. You also have provision throughput that we spoke about. If you have a, uh, if you have a custom model, then there will be certain commitments that you might put, need to purchase a one month or a six month commitment term. So ensure that you understand these terms really very well. Also, if you want to import a custom model, there might be, certain things you want to keep in mind. For example, how the billing is done. It is billed in a five minute window. So again, you want to read these terms carefully. For these different advanced tools, whether it's knowledge bases, flows, guard rails, agents, model evaluation, again, of course, these are charged. We'll come back to it uh, as I scroll down. Now, these are the different pricing details, as you can see for different models that are available over here. They are as uh, segregated over here by different third-party providers. So you have Amazon, you have Anthropic, Stability AI, 
So each one of these uh, third parties or providers have a different pricing model. And of course, the pricing model can you know differ as per the region. So you see, this is for London. So it's different for different regions, as you can see here. So certainly look into the details, okay? Um, let me scroll further down. Again, provision throughput pricing is also different for different models, depending upon the provider. Now, this is the pricing for advanced tools. So for flows, again, for a thousand node transitions, this is what they're going to charge you. Guardrails, again, this is, again, per 1,000 text units, this is what they're going to charge you. Different, like for denied topics, uh, content filters, PI information, some things are free. There you go. Word filters, etc. are free. That's a good thing. And for model evaluation, again, per human task, this is uh, the charge that is uh, that has been shared over here. Now, these charges are uh, revised on a regular basis. So come back to this URL to see the latest and the greatest pricing. There are also some pricing examples over here that I would encourage that you look at depending upon the third party provider that you are planning to use. Okay, so for example, if I'm going for Amazon models, and this is how the, uh, the billing and uh, the pricing will, uh, will be performed. So you need to understand how this calculation is done and how are you going to be charged. So hopefully uh, this is helpful, guys. This is it from me today. And uh, do post your comments around this particular service, especially if you work with this service. And I will see you shortly in some other video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.